Great. So, you did a gig. You had a speaking gig. I did. <laughs> so, I want to introduce my audience, everyone who is, subscribes to me. This is where this is going up on my website. I want to introduce my audience to you. So, audience, Barbara, Barbara, all my people, who, whoever that is watching this. So I, the reason for my invitation for you to come and have a conversation with me is because I thought it would be very useful for people who do subscribe to what I've been putting out, which is about being able to speak with more confidence, less angst, um, more a sense of I know what I'm going to say and I know what I'm doing. I wanted them to hear your story just because you recently went through in a compressed period of time, being up against needing to give a keynote, having some degree of doubt or hesitation about it, and then moving through a process that felt really good to you by the end. And so I'm hoping you can kind of just walk us through what that was like for you and what worked in terms of the approach you took to have a, a good outcome for someone who's not a professional speaker, although you're clearly a professional communicator as you write for a living. So why don't you start with that? Tell us about yourself, what you do as a writer, you know, and, and if you, I, I'll, I'll say up front, your Amazon, number one Amazon bestseller. So you may not toot your own horn, but just so people know, <laughs> you're, you're, legitimate. you're a legitimate communicator. This is what you do. You're a very good communicator in this genre and this form. And yet, as a lot of professionals run into this, and yet speaking was something that was not, uh, wasn't like, hey, I got this um, and I, I could use some help. So Fill us in. Like, how did that all hold that to go? How did how did that all go? Sure, sure. So, uh, yes, I write crime novels. I just turned in my eighth novel, so I've been fortunate to to win a lot of awards and and have my books be bestsellers. Um, but that's fiction, and that's a whole different animal from nonfiction. So, I saw your responses. We're in this currently in this writing cohort, and I saw your responses to some people's essays and was impressed with the the depth of your insight and the kindness of your response. Um, and so when I saw that you were a public speaker, I decided to reach out to you. I was pushing up against a deadline to give a talk at Pikes Peak Writers Conference, and I had last spoken there 11 years ago. And and had quite happily set a very high bar for myself. That previous talk went went really well, and I was I was concerned that I that I meet or exceed the expectations I knew that I was was going in with. Um, so, rather than relying only on my own gut instinct, I wanted a professional opinion. And so, initially, you and I set up a meeting. I ahead of time I sent you my talk and what I was expecting was feedback on the the contents of my talk. And I also knew there was a risk that by sending it to you you might say whoa you're taking the wrong approach. I I was aware of that I was nervous about that um but I am really one of those people who wants to learn and grow. And I trusted you enough and I trusted your background enough to say, okay, well, if he wants, if he recommends I take a different approach, I'm I'm going to listen. So sure enough, that is what happened, right? Because you read my talk and you had some suggestions about rearranging it. And you very much emphasize that I come from a place of authenticity. And you talked to me about the risks of reading my talk. And that caused a fair amount of panic because I didn't have time to memorize it. I'm not a good memorizer. It's why I eventually left a, a career in, um, as a pianist. And I started with, it, it, we started with, you sent me the script, which you were planning on mm -hmm. reading. 
me then saying, I'm not so sure about reading from the script, that might not be your best bet. And you immediately went to, oh, that means I need to memorize it. And Good point, yes. And then, which wasn't what I was suggesting, obviously, and isn't what you wound up doing. So, so then what was that juncture like when we started talking about you speaking without, not from a script or from memorization? It was very scary because yeah. that the, the script would be my first crutch in, in standing up in front of a crowd, memorizing that script. So I'm not reading from it would be my second crutch. And I was very nervous about your idea that I, I just share my stories and be more spontaneous with it. That made me uncomfortable. But again, I felt, I, it resonated. Mm -hmm. I felt that you were right and that this was the approach that I wanted to take. And it's, I've, I've long wanted to be able to speak off the cuff. I've seen wonderful speakers do that. You assured me I had good stories. So I flipped things around and in my head and I approached it from a different way. And, and it went much more smoothly because of just sharing my stories, um, I would, I had still had my papers, which is another story because when I got up there, um, the pod, the way the podium was set up in the lighting and my, my ongoing fight with my reading glasses, I couldn't read. I couldn't have read it if I'd wanted to. So, phew. <laughs> you had an alternative uh, approach planned. Yeah, that's great. So let, so what, let's go to the outcome. Like, what the audience response was like, what it was like to be at the conference after you delivered the uh, the keynote and the kind of response you got from people. What was that like? Oh, it was wonderful. So it's always a good sign when people laugh at the points that you're hoping they're going to laugh. Yeah. It's, it's even more rewarding when they laugh at the points that you think, oh, it'd be nice if they laughed, but you don't really expect it. Mm -hmm. And And as I was able to engage with the audience, look out at them, read read the response in facial expressions and body language. Um, it, there was this weird moment, I, I don't know how this sounds, but there was this weird moment where I almost felt like a conductor in front of a symphony. Oh, beautiful, yeah. And I could tell where to lean into the jokes and, and where to pull back, or that's how it felt to me. Absolutely. And, yeah. And so I, I did, as you had said, I, I went, I riffed on some things, some things opened up that I hadn't anticipated and I could be open and flexible with that. And then when I finished the talk, um, I got a standing ovation and that was completely unexpected. Mm -hmm. I was mobbed after the talk with people wanting to thank me or share their own stories with me. And this went on, this, this was Friday at lunch and this went on through um, until Sunday afternoon and the close of the conference. And I I made so many wonderful connections. I reconnected with people. I met new people who I think will become friends mm -hmm. um, because we had so much to share that came out of, out of that talk. Yeah. So it really was rewarding to my heart. Fantastic. That's so wonderful. I, I really am appreciating this point you're making about noticing and it's one of the biggest reasons not to read from the script or memorize is that as you speak from something that's authentic, and especially when it's story based, mm -hmm. and the audience, because that's most evocative for an audience, and they start responding, then something responds in you. Like when people are, are yes. doing out there, you get woken up inside, and then you want to extend yourself into that relationship, which has begun with your storytelling, they respond. And then if you don't have the script or it's not memorized, you give yourself the room to, to make that response. Like add, you add a few more comments or you're taking a little detour and coming back to the main frame, which sounds like exactly what you did. And, and that's, 
that's like largely the purpose of that recommendation is to give you a, a chance to actually get in a relationship with the audience. That's just so cool. Hear that. Yeah, that I, relationship is exactly exactly the right word. And for somebody like me who I don't feel like I think fast on my feet, I think well, but not quickly. It was amazing to see that happen. But, but I think through the three times that we met, I really internalized the stories by by reviewing them with you. And so that made it much easier for me to, to go off script. Fantastic. Yeah, it's and I and also what you just said about I don't think fast on my feet, but when we're in relationship, when we're in actual relationship with another person in conversation or group, all of that goes out the window. You're no longer doing it's not like a a heavy lift or something you need to manufacture the ability to think. You naturally fall into a kind of intelligent uh repartee that yeah. just spontaneous and uh you sounds like you just hit all that that's just really cool yeah it was it was thrilling i think the risk in reading a speech or memorizing a talk um you, it's easy to get into this sort of meta instead of being inside the words the stories that you want to share you're watching yourself tell yeah those stories. And that's when it's very easy to get to lose your place, to lose your thoughts, to get um, derailed in a, in a bad way. Yeah. 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 That, that's why I was using the term like sense memory of allowing yourself to just speak from the sense memory of the stories, because then they're coming from the inside out. Like instead of reading the words outside in and you, you know, parroting the, yeah script of it um so the what else did you do for yourself in terms of managing so you had the high expectation you really wanted to go well there was the bit of panic when i was suggesting you might shift frame and then you did that what else did you do to make it go well for you in terms of managing your focus or your time or leading up to the talk? Did you spend a few minutes on your own and gather your thoughts? Or I'm just curious what else worked for you to make that come off well? Yeah, that is a really great question because I'm not sure I had, once I was on site, I didn't have a lot of opportunity. Um, so I had no no chance to go off by myself and be quiet and in group. I had to um, just get up from the lunch table and and walk upstairs. So for me personally, I've done a lot of psychology on this in terms of um, sort of a what will be will be attitude. Um, and i i I had prepared by working with you by going through those three sessions, by reading through um, my speech to myself that morning and seeing where I was a little bit fuzzy about mm -hmm. getting from this story to the next story and sort of drilling down on those yeah. points where I was most likely to have a misstep. Yeah. Um, and then and then just getting into a sort of a Zen or Stoic philosophy attitude toward I, I've done the best I can. That's all I can ask of myself. Mm -hmm. And now it will be what it will be. Is that making sense? Yeah, totally. And when we were talking, when I look back at what we wound up focusing on, a lot of it was going through a number of stories. It was story selection. That's one thing we did. We kind of looked at yes. them all. And I was wanting to know what's the focus, what's the thing you're really wanting to talk about. And you had a number of possible points, I remember. And we wound up realizing this is one, there's really one message here. And that seemed like a useful point for you. Did you find that helpful that once Six. we got down to one thing that that helped organize your thoughts a bit more? Extremely things fell into place after that. And and one thing you gave me is some of the stories I had kind of pussyfooted around because I didn't want to stand up there and 
and toot my own horn. The, the purpose of this talk was to inspire people with my story. People who want to write fiction, it's a, it's a really tough haul. Um, and I wanted to say, don't give up. It happened to me. If it happened to me, it can happen to you. And, and yet I also didn't want to stand up there and say, well, and this happened and it was all great. Um, so you reassured me that the stories that I was not leaning into, such as what happened when I went to pitch fest and, and pitched my novel, um, you said, yeah, that's the story they need to hear. And, and it was, it ended up being a big center the center portion of my talk and it was and it was as expected where I got the most laughs mm -hmm. um so I kind of started out on a on a down note with a story about the wildfire and then and then this process of trying to get an agent and trying to get an editor and that's where the humor was and then and then I ended on a more sad story so I, I did have people sobbing <laughs> yeah. but it was a good thing um so yeah, so that process we went through of which story to pick because, and I think that's hard for everyone. We all have so many stories. Which are the ones that are going to resonate? Which are the ones that lend themselves to the main message that I'm trying to communicate? And once we got that down, the next piece of work was how do we transition from one story to the next? What's the framing that makes sense to say, and here's what the story meant to me at that point that leads it into the next piece. Like I remember your story about Rattlesnake Hill that was somewhere somewhere down the list. And I'm like, this, this is this is like the first thing. And then how did you actually make that transition? I'm curious in the end how you went from the Rattlesnake Hill story. Uh, into the rest of it. Do you remember what the transition was? Yeah, I, th I had said that I never challenged myself on Rattlesnake Hill again, even though it was so important to view myself as fearless as a little kid. And, and then transitioning into the fact that life will put us on this high dangerous hill where if at any point we apply the brakes once we've committed, we'll only get ourselves into trouble. Yeah, and that... you had, yeah, yeah. And you had made a great point later on in the talk. I referred back to the wildfire, the very first and brief story. Um, and you said, refer back instead to Rattlesnake Hill, because this, this was where you started applying the brakes on your career in a way that could have damaged your career. And and you were exactly right. It really held the talk together there. So thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. You you have such great stories. It was really fun to help you weave them together. And uh it it just sounds like it I mean, clearly it went so well. And I'm just so excited for you. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks for all the the both the um literal help on the on the speech but also the the encouragement my pleasure and thanks for having this conversation with me i hope it's useful to anybody out there who's got an upcoming presentation or talk and is uh wondering how they're going to get through it and uh that's good <laughs> Yeah, it'd be lovely, wouldn't it, if we could see how things went, would have gone if I had not connected with you, that serendipity of of meeting you in this writing cohort. It, that would have been interesting. <laughs> That'd be really fun. It would be a fun uh, movie script or a thing to write up, you know, the fork in the 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 timelines going this yes. way. <laughs> All right, well... Thanks again, Barbara. And uh, thank you. Well, I'll see you in the writing group. <laughs> All right. Sounds great. All right. Take care. You too. Bye.